classes my way, as in art classes made for you. Um, please comment in the comments section about things you would like to learn. Just let me know and I will try to get around to making videos for it. Otherwise, it's literally art classes my way because I'm just going to make up things as I go along that I think you want to learn. So what we're going to do here is we are going to be working on brush technique. I have noticed that with some of my students, a lot of them, uh, no matter the age, don't really have a very firm grasp on how to use a variety of paint brushes. So I'm going to break this up into a uh, little section of just what each paintbrush will do and how to basically use it. So this is watercolor uh, based. It's easier to just set up watercolor than it is acrylic uh, right off the bat. But uh, these techniques are the exact same for either one, acrylic or watercolor. So whatever you're going to learn in this, you can very easily apply to your own fan brush, which is what we got here. Regardless of your medium. Alright, so we're just going to do a pretty simple little pine tree here. And I'm going to show you how to use this brush. Now a lot of people think that when your fan brush gets like this, actually this is the best time to use it. This is when you want to use it. Because the purpose of a fan brush is to make making your strokes or any marks that it makes you want them to be uneven. You don't want them to be perfect. Although you can make perfect marks with these and every little mark that you make will be nice and straight. But rather than putting in each individual little, like for instance, a blade of grass. So we'll just do that. Make some nice little grass very easily and very quickly with this. I'm just using the absolute tips of my brush. I am not really touching very much of my brush at all to the paper. So that way I can get these nice little blades going and with a whole lot less effort than doing them all individually. And you can just kind of place them around at random. A lot of people think that they have to be in absolute control of everything at all times. And I used to be one of those people. Um, there, there's such a thing as ha a happy accident in art. And you got to let those happy, happy accidents happen, especially if you do a lot of nature paintings or drawings or anything. You got to learn to roll with the punches and maybe not be so quick with that eraser or trying to cover up something you view as a mistake. There we go, some nice lovely grass going on. Nice and super duper quick. And you can see that's paint's gotten a lot lighter on my brush because it's all going down on here. Using the very, very tips. Put some random marks down this way, why not? Okay, load it up with just a tiny amount of water. Ew. Pat, pat. And we'll put a different green, a little more lime green, springy looking green in here, just to brighten up that grass a tiny bit. Exact same movements. Think of it a lot for all you ladies out there and for all of you fellas who don't wear makeup. Uh, watch your wife or your girlfriend put on some makeup or you know find a YouTube channel that shows you how to put on makeup It's a lot like um, using your uh, Eyeshadow or not eyeshadow, but your uh, Mascara you don't want to Push and do this. That's not gonna help you do anything and you're just gonna ruin your brush that way I ruin a lot of brushes trying to show people the wrong way to use them um you're just really just barely using just the tips, just the very, very edges of your brush. All right, now let's move on to our pine tree. Now, because this is watercolor, I do the, the leaves first because the, uh, the trunk of the tree is gonna be darker than this green. 
See if I can't separate these a little bit more. Oh well, guess drop. Uh, the trunk of your tree is going to be a lot darker so than this green, so this green's not going to cover it up. So in the case of watercolor, you're going to want to do the uh, leaves first for the pine tree. In the case of acrylic, um, really doesn't matter, but typically what you do in acrylic is the things that are furthest away get put down first, and then you layer on top the things that are getting closer. So, just do the top of our little Christmas tree here. Again, just using the very tip, tips. Probably gonna wish I had a smaller fan brush for no bigger than this piece of paper is. Oh well. Now you can do pretty much what I am doing here. Again, I'm just using the very ends of this paint brush. And you can keep going down, make a nice full Christmas tree. Well, I want a little more variety. We're gonna make something that's a little bit more mountainy. And you can do a, a tree two different ways. I'm gonna go one way down one side and another way down and down the other side. Now you can go upwards with your your limbs here. And I need more paint. And it just creates a different kind of look for a pine tree for you there. And I went a little too far out on that side. And pine trees are a little bit on the layered side. Nice upward facing branches here. And it's pretty much the exact same thing. I'm using the exact same thing as I did with the grass down here. I'm just doing it a lot closer together. Flip my brush over. And I always start with the inside. Your paint's gonna be stronger when you start off with your paint and brush. So that's where all the darkness is gonna be. And then as you move out, you see that it's getting lighter. Well, it's going to be getting lighter out here, and you know, that's where a lot more light's going to be, is on the outside as opposed to the inside. And that's probably about as far as I want to go, really. I'll put a little short one underneath here. There we go. Alright, it'll start making sense in a moment. Get a little more water. It's pat, pat. I'm patting. Whoop! Away he went. I am patting my brush on a little rag that I have on my on my leg. Oh goodness. I can't keep a hold of this brush to save my life now. I'm just patting this little brush on my, on a little rag on my leg. I don't know why I have to have it on my leg. I can't have it up on my, my actual table itself. I don't know why it drives me nuts. All right. Now for the other side, we're gonna go a little bit more downwards. I'm not gonna go quite as long. I want to stagger just a little bit. the exact same method as what I was doing over here just going more downwards I see a lot of people do their pine trees going that way I see people go this direction with their pine trees and then there's also the straight out just like how the top is here and that top feels a little separated so I'm gonna kind of blend him in just a little bit make him feel like he's more part of the tree yeah. 
and just go, kind of zigzagging a little bit going down through the middle. But I want to leave plenty of room to put my my branch going down through the middle. Or branch, ha ha, trunk. I don't know the parts of a tree. All right. And that is the end of my little fan brush. Now, unlike most paint brushes, the fan brush, you can't put it back into shape before you put it away because it always wants to have this toothy look. And that's fine. I just make sure that it doesn't stay in humongous clumps. And then when I go to play with it later, it may have dried this way, but if I just give it a light ruffle along the top, all those little bits will flare back out and it'll go back to being like a, like you did in the beginning, nice and beautiful. But he's just going to have to stay this way for a while until he's done drying. Now for the next part. Oh, who do I want to play with? All right, round number two. And this fan brush is a number one. Woo. Camera. Come on. Wake up. No. Take my word for it. It's a fan brush number one. At least with whatever brand that is. Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E. One thing to definitely take note of, um, if you are taking classes uh, with somebody and they want you to get certain brushes, make sure that you ask what brand they're wanting you to buy. Because I've seen this happen a lot in my own classes. Somebody will just bring a Filbert number 8 from just their random assortment of paint brushes that they have at home and that filbert number eight compared to the, my grumbacher filbert number eight is like a quarter of the size so not only and if you watch my beginning acrylic um uh, video i'll mention it in there but not only do uh, companies have patents on their specific shades of red, yellows, and blues, and what they call ultramarine, they're all gonna be different between the companies. And even though the paint brushes all have the same name and they all go by a number system, you're still gonna have the same issues with the paintbrush. One person's Filbert number eight could be way smaller than another person's Filbert number eight. So, oh, apparently I didn't clean this guy out good enough. A little brown or yellow in that. All right. And I'm not really too worried about colors in here. So far, I've just been using hooker green for most of this. And then I put a little bit of a leafy, leaf green in the bottom of it to give it that lighter pop spring look. Now I am just going to go to brown, my brown, and get a good healthy amount of it on my brush. And I, again, just using absolute tip of my brush. Now, since that's so thick in there, I'm not really gonna worry too much about putting the shaft of the uh, actual tree all the way up there. And actually, I think I'm gonna water that down just a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. I'm just putting little amounts. It feels really dark right now, but as the water evaporates out of my paint here, it's gonna get a little bit lighter. It's gonna change just a tiny bit.
Now because my grass is really dry, if I go over it very quickly, I will not agitate the green paint that I've already laid down. And that allows me to put a glaze of this brown over the top of it. And as long as I'm quick about it and I don't sit there and fiddle, fiddle, fiddle with it, I won't stir that green up and end up blending it all away. So it'll just stay. Now I do want a little touch deeper brown because I have seen quite a few pine trees. You know, those little dead branches they got on the bottom. Put a few of those in there. Just the tip. All right. And there we have it. We have a pine tree with two completely different looks. The more downward look and then the more upward look. You can do it to where it's nice and full all the way down through the tree. And then you can have the nice scraggly look underneath of outdoor non-Christmas tree trees. And there we have it. That is the uses, or the be well, some of the best uses for our fan brush and the care of the fan brush and how to properly use them rather than bending up all of his bristles. Tune in next time. We're gonna be doing a different technique and we will be using, if I can grab him here, have a name. Well, whoever this guy is, um, so one fourth, I'll find out what he actually is but by the time I do the video. But we're going to focus on using that nice edge that he has. He is a nice thin brush, but he has a very, very broad face. And we're going to be learning how to use something more along these lines. So thank you everybody for coming and watching my short tutorial on one, making pine trees, and two, how to use your fan brush appropriately. You all have a great day. And thanks for hanging out. Again, like, comment, subscribe, but please leave me comments of things you specifically want to learn. And I will try to get around to making a video about those things. Uh, or if you want to just send me pictures of your artwork and you want to have a critique, to improve or maybe something doesn't feel right to you, I'm more than happy to help you guys out with that. Also help support me by going to my Etsy account if you would like and I will see you guys all later.